Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today we're going over the Salesforce Certified Marketing Associate exam outline, the exam guide. What this is, is this is just gonna tell you about the exam and we're gonna go through it together. We're gonna talk about the exam and I'm just gonna rattle off how I felt taking the exam and what I would do to prepare. One thing that I will note is that I have gotten this certification. I am planning on creating a course. This is the course we are working on right now. It is taking a little extra time than I thought it would just because kids' schedules are crazy right now. But when that is released, you guys will be the first to know. So subscribe and you should know when we release this course. It'll probably be out on Salesforce Upskill. I'm not sure when, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it. We're gonna talk a little bit about marketing associate. So the associate credentials, these ones are not going to be as crazy or in depth as regular Salesforce certifications with the, the 60 questions. It's going to be at a cheaper price point. It's going to be a lot easier to get the certification. Let's go ahead and jump into about it. It's going to talk about marketing cloud engagement, general marketing concepts. They say that you should have up to six months experience using the marketing cloud engagement software. However, I have never had any experience using the marketing cloud engagement software, and I was still able to pass this with very few resources, I will say. I think I got this within the first week or two that this was available, and I think I just used Trailhead and a couple of other resources. But I will say that there aren't very many resources, and I have had lots of general Salesforce experience in using similar softwares to this. And so I had to really dig for a lot of resources, was still able to pass. A lot of the associate certifications are going to be very term heavy, vocabulary heavy, and it's going to be a lot of matching the vocabulary of Salesforce's concepts, the general marketing concepts, the marketing cloud engagement concepts to what they're actually used for or to different business scenarios, what have you. Yeah, let's talk about the audience description. So you're gonna understand general marketing concepts. It goes into what those marketing concepts are. You can go into those. Um, you have foundational knowledge of marketing cloud engagement. So essentially just knowing what the different parts of marketing cloud engagement are, what they're called. You don't necessarily need to know how to use them, but you should know what they are used for. Talk about different marketing tools to engage with customers, has the knowledge and can use marketing cloud engagement. Again, just said this, but just know what things are used for, not how to use them and the intricacies of when they will work and when they won't work. Those scenarios are typically saved for regular exams, not associate exams, if that makes sense. We're going to talk about different journeys and journey builder. I've never used Journey Builder, but still was able to pass. Uh, you are familiar with some of the reporting and analytics and key metrics. I found this one to be very, very crucial to understand the different pieces of knowledge and how to use those. You are not expected to set up, configure, or administer marketing cloud. Use messaging channels outside of email, such as SMS or push notifications. So just know how to use email marketing. You don't need to know how to use text or any of the notifications that pop up on your phone. No marketing cloud engagement, formerly Pardot. That was one thing that really confused me. A lot of the resources say Pardot still, which is totally fine. You just have to know what to call it when you're searching for resources. No HTML. You don't need to know HTML, CSS, or SQL. Um, I don't think it really came across of any of those. Purpose of the exam, get the certification <laughs> about the exam. So like other associate exams, 40 multiple choice and up to five non-scored questions. It is going to be an hour and 10 minutes to pass a passing score of 65%. So doing math in my head is really tricky. It's around 25 questions. Um, so if you're able to hit around 30 questions that you are able to get correctly, you're going to be sitting really comfortable on the exam. Um, which would be, you know, you can get up to 10 wrong if you are getting a 75. So 12 or 13 would wrong would probably be okay. However, you're going to want to try and get every single question correctly like you would on any other exam. This is going to cost $75 plus applicable taxes. That's in the U.S., so I'm not sure what that would be in other countries. You would have to go check on WebAssessor, which is where you take exams from, where you schedule them, 
and you pay for them. But one thing that is across currencies is that retake is free for this certification. So if you take it once and you fail, you can take it for free at any point. I'm not sure what those intervals are. I think it's like the first one is 24 hours and then it gets longer for each subsequent fail. However, I will say that you can take three exam attempts per release of Salesforce and there are three releases per year. So there's a release in spring, summer, and winter. And so for each release, you have three attempts. Now, I was able to pass this on the first one just by understanding some of the basic concepts. Uh, I will say that I do have my MBA, which helped a little bit to understand some of the corporate jargon that was on there. But if you have spent time in a corporate office and understanding office jargon, office vocabulary, then you should be okay. And also studying for the exam. Delivery options. You can take this proctored on site or online. I personally prefer online, but it is hard, especially we have two young children who are not quiet, which is totally fine. It just makes it really difficult to take exams. So if you find an on-site testing center, that can also be really good. You cannot have any hard copy or online materials referenced during the exam and no prerequisites. Well, this is a neat little note. You can have the opportunity to provide comments and feedback for the individual questions on the exam. So that's one thing, but I will note that one thing that has changed over the years of me taking Salesforce certifications is that you have an option now to provide notes. So sometimes a couple of strategies that I've taken to exams in the past, not necessarily for Salesforce exams, but for like my master's degree, I took a lot of online exams for that. You are able to take notes on your questions, on your um, your exam. In So like, let's pretend that this right here is going to be, hopefully you can see my mouse hovering. This is going to be the question. So you're having the question, you're reading it, and then there's going to be like a bar right here. And then you'll have a box over here to enter in any notes. And then below you'll have the opportunity to provide comments about the individual questions that you could give to the credential people of Salesforce. Uh, over here, you're going to be able to take notes. So what can be really helpful is a couple of different strategies. You can take notes on specific questions, like saying, hey, this equals this, then, you know, thinking out your question, which can be super useful. Uh, you could also do like a brain dump at the beginning of the exam and say like, hey, this is what I remember from cramming. I don't necessarily recommend that because cramming is not a great <laughs> resource. You should be learning and knowing all of these concepts by heart at the end of the by taking this exam. However, I will say that that strategy has worked for me before. So, you know, to each their own. Another thing is that you may have a question from like further on in the exam or beginning of the exam, somewhere in the exam, that sparks uh, another thing in your brain about something. So let's take an example here that's not Salesforce related. So let's say I am taking a test on the American Revolution and one piece of information on exam question 12 helps me remember something I studied. And so I will write that down in the notes section from exam question 12 and then when I have reached exam question 30, I might be able to go back to my notes, have that thing triggered in my brain again that I learned, and it might help me pass on question 30. That is also a strategy that I've used. So I think it's a great addition to be able to take notes. I use it liberally in the, in the exam just to write down everything that I remember and anything that is tricky. And yeah, that is probably I spent a good amount of time on taking notes on the exam and I still have time with the allotted time that it's given for the exam. Anywho, there are no prerequisites to this exam. Let's talk about recommended training and resources. There's a trail mix. There are recommended certifications. So it's recommended that you get uh, the associate certification, which I will say I do have a course on it. And anyone who's taking it, I'd say 99% of people who have taken the whole thing and who have used all the resources have passed on their first try. I think I've only heard of one person who hasn't passed on their first try and it was by like one question and they really did not do much of the course. You can visit Trailhead Academy to take a course from Salesforce themselves. But what I have learned uh, from these is that they are extremely expensive and some of them can also be pretty terrible. They're not great. Um, except for 
in the courses that there are not other resources for or other exams that there are not resources for. So many of the higher level architect certifications is what would be useful for doing a Trailhead Academy course. But that is for you to decide. Yeah, I typically I don't think it's worth it unless your employer's paying for it. Uh, exam outline. Okay, so this is where we're getting into the meat of the certification. So it's going to be marketing concepts at 28%. It's going to be marketing cloud engagement basics at 22%. Sending emails and journeys at 22%. And we've got data management at 18%. Reporting and analytics at 10%. You can do the math here, but if you pass, let's say, marketing concepts, marketing cloud engagement, and emails and journeys, then you will pass. But any questions that you are able to pass from these other two sections would be super helpful. I recommend setting everything. However, those three are going to be the biggest and they're going to make the biggest difference on the exam if you know those information, those pieces of information. Okay, so marketing concepts at 28%. So you're gonna be talking about marketing strategy and all the different pieces of lingo and what to use in certain scenarios. You're gonna be given scenarios, you will talk about effective email opt-in processes and the marketing campaigns. You're going to talk about different laws, how to respect privacy with the subscriber base and privacy standards. So specifically, you will want to study the GD some. It's the European version of email privacy, web privacy, what have you. There are some trailhead modules on those. And then you'll also want to understand the California one. Those are two that will be mentioned and you'll want to be familiar with. Given a scenario, you'll provide examples of basic email goals, metrics. Essentially, you'll be you'll be given a business scenario and you want to match it up with whatever metric or goal that matches that scenario. A lot of context clues will be given in this. And so as long as you understand the vocabulary that they are using, it should be a fairly easy pass. Again, you'll be given a customer scenario and summarize the type and content of the message conveyed to the target audience. All right, that's going to be marketing concepts. Now we're going to go into marketing cloud engagement basics. Um, this one is very Salesforce heavily focused. So understanding the vocabulary of marketing cloud engagement is going to be crucial to pass this and what what you'll need. So some of the more important ones are going to be subscriber keys, contact keys, contact IDs. Those are going to be really important to understand the differences between those. Yeah, I also want to say that data dimensions here or data extensions, understanding what those are, are going to cross over from data management a lot and they will show up a lot. So that's one thing, again, that you'll want to know. Um, there is not, I will say, a, a free developer org of Marketing Cloud that's available. There are some things that you can do with a somewhat free Pardot account that I have really jerry-rigged, which was not fun. It was very difficult to get that going, and it's not worth it because it's not really helpful. So there are some other tools that you can use that are available through the Trailhead that kind of guide you through. It's just a series of screenshots, essentially, that you're able to click through and see what um, Pardot Marketing Cloud Engagement does. Um, we'll talk about business units, corresponding permissions, essentially any of the pieces of vocabulary in here you'll want to know. Uh, essential features of Marketing Cloud Engagement, uh, identify different resources for assistance, training, and support. You should probably be familiar with those. And any of the cloud page submission setup. I don't recall having that on the exam, but it could show up from the bank of questions for your exam. So sending emails and journeys. This one was really difficult because you cannot get hands-on practice with sending emails and building out journeys. I will say that it is fairly similar to creating a flow, but just for your sending out emails. There's a similar software that I've used called Outreach that is very, very similar to this, and that helped on the exam. I don't know if that's a free tool, but essentially you'll be creating a way for you to market to certain people, um, very similar to a flow. So let's say, hey, after 
five days, you'll want to send out this email. And then after two days, you'll send out this email again. Maybe you'll send out a text. Maybe you'll send out this. And it kind of creates a journey that you can go in for the customer to go through as far as email marketing and setting up which emails go at which time. And then you can report on that, which is really cool, really awesome for marketers. But that's essentially what journeys do. You can talk about the necessary configurations and successful activation. It'll be a lot of going through different pieces of documentation to learn about that. Uh, Given the scenario, identify the recommended configuration and email send settings. Distinguish between template components and content blocks. That is something that you can set up in a Trailhead org with some features of Pardot is that you can create a content block and you can do different building out of emails. You can talk about different journey functionalities that could be used to address business needs, very similar to how the different pieces of a flow work, but with different outcomes. Then given a scenario, then you can accomplish content rendering validation. So that's going to be email sendings and journeys. That one is kind of an outlier as far as the other ones go, and it is going to be very specific to just that section. And then data management. Data extensions were very, very important for my exam, and you should learn the different reasons why you want to create data extension, um, different various data import mechanisms, how to use data extensions, in what scenario would you use what type of data extension to identify the targeted data. So essentially, you're just going to want to know the current best practices of data extensions. Um, And then finally, you have reporting and analytics. So you'll talk about where specific data can be found in Marketing Cloud and then interpret the undesired send results and deliverability consequences. So that one was also pretty heavily featured on my exam that I can remember. And so you'll want to learn about why certain things might not deliver certain emails that might not deliver, why that would be how to retarget to get those to deliver, whatnot. That one, the reporting and analytics is kind of spread across other sections as well. Hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, that's going to be the meat of the exam as far as what to learn, what to look out for, some of the things that you can and can't do. Um, It's really a big bummer that you can't have marketing cloud engagement for a trailhead org to go in and practice. I could go on a spiel about how I think that a lot of Salesforce should have those things available to us to study, even if it's really heavily blocked. I know that a lot of the AI tools you can only have like um, for five days, but you can have it for free for that long to study for the exams. Anywho, it just, I feel like it gatekeeps a lot. But exam code of conduct, do not give out answers, do not ask questions for answers or any solutions. Um, Anyone who is asking, offering, or receiving for those answers can get reported to Salesforce and get your certifications, your super badges taken away, and you can also be blocked from taking any further certification exams. It is really serious. Uh, It's not fun to get certifications taken away. I've never had it luckily taken away, but make sure that you are just doing everything above board, learn the actual stuff, don't try and cheat. It's not good. You won't learn. It'll be very difficult to do your job. Uh, yeah. Anywho, maintaining your certification. No current maintenance for the marketing cloud, the marketing associate exam. However, this could change at any point. I remember there were a couple of certifications. I think business analyst was one where they did not have any maintenance for the certification and then they changed it. And so it was a little bit jarring to realize, hey, I have to do maintenance on this now. And I don't just get to keep it. So make sure that you are looking at this regularly. I like to look at it three times a year whenever the releases come out, just to make sure that everything is above board. And that's usually when they roll over your certifications. So make sure you're not losing them. Uh, If you don't do the maintenance within the prescribed time, you will lose your certifications, which is not fun. But that is going to be it for this walkthrough of the exam guide. I hope that you found this video helpful. We are working on this exam course to come out here. I don't really have a timeline. It is one of the more difficult ones to make a course for just because there isn't a trailhead org available. 
or a developer org available for me to go through. And so creating a resource is pretty difficult. Please connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter at Emily Call MBA. Thanks so much. Catch you guys in the next one.